I would like to leave this farm in better condition than what it was given to me by my parents and especially by my dad. Nutrient Management Program is uh, a program which uh, allows us to work with the farmer, the Department of Ag, to work with the farmer to develop nutrient management programs, uh, which allows them to uh, manage their uh, cropland, hayland more efficiently. Uh, we can give them a plan. It starts out with soil samples, we sample the soil, uh, do the testing here in Moorfield. From that, we determine what the soil needs uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, uh, potash levels, and we can inform the grower how much they need uh, for each particular crop they're going to grow. It allows them to become more efficient. Uh, they can uh, more effectively use the fertilize, which will help them in their uh, cost of operation. Poultry integrators actually started back in the late 90s requiring growers to have nutrient management plans. And in 2002, West Virginia signed on to the Chesapeake Bay Agreement and the Department of Ag became active in uh, developing those plans. We're located at the headwaters of the Chesapeake Bay, which uh, gives us a lot of attention. Uh, the, the water flows from here into the bay, so it's important to keep the waters clean here uh, so that we can keep uh, clean water flowing down into the bay and do our part to, uh, to keep the water clean. It was really came to the attention during the Chesapeake Bay cleanup uh, to try to uh, cut down on a lot of the nitrogen and phosphorus sediment running into the Chesapeake Bay. You're looking at the whole farm and you're assessing fields by the amount of risk that there is for nutrient loss to try and protect the environment and certainly hold the nutrients on the farm where the where the farmer's getting the benefit from the nutrients that he's purchasing or from the manure that he's using. Usually the farmer likes to go with us the first time we go out and we go around the farm, look at the fields, look at what practices they already have in place, talk about their goals, what they want to see on the farm, how they want to see it progress, any practices that they're interested in trying, and uh, we gather the soil samples then. We take them into a building to let them dry. They have to be dried before they can be processed. They get sifted and then sent to our lab, which is also here in the office. Um, Brenda takes care of all of our samples in the lab. And they can see some things that maybe I don't need that additional fertilizer. And as Jason and I figured out, we don't need that additional nitrogen. He's proved to me the number of clover that's in the ground here is enough nitrogen. He asked those questions because I forgot to tell him, wait a minute, I've interceded clover in these fields. Well, that accounts for so much nitrogen that I hadn't really equivalated back to the soil test. I started saying, okay, let's account for this. And he did in the plan. Then all of a sudden we're adding less or maybe none at all. We've totally stopped the poultry litter. I don't even need it anymore. We've been able to balance with the cattle and the rotational grazing and looking at the numbers that he came up with, getting cattle maybe a little bit farther away from the farm center area here. And uh, NRCS has helped us to do that by putting in these drinkers and walkways. The records that we did were um, some feeding records, of course, cattle numbers and he kind of needed the average number of cattle that stayed here at the farm. It's really not that difficult. If you give him the numbers, he puts everything together. I didn't have to sit down in front of a computer and fill out all the formats and log on to a bunch of different pages. Um, again, the program was free, so basically he did all the work. He can, I think, help you maybe improve on some things that maybe you just don't see especially if you haven't had a person like that on your farm. After working with Jason and finding out, okay, water filtration is very important, um, I talked to the local um, NRCS and soil conservation and everything. We blocked off 10 acres of ground here. Now you can see all the green vegetation that we have, and I think that's a plus because that green vegetation has roots that helps filter, and those roots go down some places two and three feet. And I think that's a good filtration 
uh, for any type of runoff that we would have from the farm. We can capture it, keep it here, and as anyone would say, well, what are you going to do with those nutrients? We'll put trees in here. I just thought it was the right thing to do. Um, whenever I do something, I want to try to do it the best I can. I started out small, and um, I've done more and more, and you know, usually uh, most everything I've tried, I've found some benefit to it. It's made me a lot more efficient. Um, an example would be I have the ability here to have 22 paddocks on my farm and rotational graze, and with my plan kind of scoping that and how I do my, my nutrient management. And with that, you know, I get by with a lot less hay um, and I can fertilize less in certain areas and use it elsewhere where on fields that have never had fertilizer. In order to farm, you gotta have good soil and you gotta have clean water. Um, you gotta have good grass and good feed. Um, and I've found that, you know, being environmentally responsible goes hand in hand with that. As all farmers know, the profit margin is going to be small in, in most times. So you have to uh, be efficient with what you do. And it's, uh, you know, like I just probably, I think I already said, efficiency was a big thing for me. It's made me more efficient. Those farmers talk, and we started getting more of the other, you know, the land-based farmers, the hay, just the hay and pasture farmers, and even the crop farmers. After that, after they hear what Will's doing here for the um, poultry industry, uh, that they learned of the what we was doing, and they wanted the practice done on their farms, and gradually just expanded out. What helped us out also too was was the cooperation with the different state and federal agencies such as the Conservation Agency and the NRCS. Uh, they have a lot of, like with NRCS, they have the 590 standard which is a nutrient management standard. Uh, we've helped them out in the past with that and even some of, they got plan writers too that have done some plans to help towards that 90,000 acres. Pretty proud of it. Uh, it took a lot of Took a lot of acres, a lot of miles, walking through people's fields and stuff uh, to get to that that number. The EPA is ecstatic with what West Virginia is doing. Uh, we've been quoted as saying West Virginia is on the best trajectory of any of its states in the Chesapeake Bay watershed to meet the requirements. That this really helps West Virginia's farmers. It improves the profitability of our farms and it also saves the water resources for the citizens of West Virginia. Everybody wins with this program, and I'm so proud of the farmers and the citizens that participate. In May of this year, uh, we reached our 90,000 acre, uh, uh, acres under Nature Management Plan, um, and that was uh, through the efforts of the Department of Ag and some of the other planners in the state. Uh, we actually reached that goal. That was a 2025 uh, goal uh, in the Chesapeake Bay uh, Plan and we reached that goal of May of this year. In the beginning it was, you know, uh, there was a lot of question whether West Virginia with a, uh, a totally voluntary program couldn't meet those goals. They were pretty lofty goals and uh, we met them and I think we've proven that uh, we can meet those goals through a voluntary program.